Hello, today we are having a conversation with Yasmin Ahmad about her ideas on One Malaysia. One Malaysia, everybody's talking about it, Yasmin. Everybody's talking about it. What, what do you think about it in general? I think I've been talking about it for 20 years in my commercials and in my films and in my writings. So when they came up with One Malaysia, I thought, yeah, the flick of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. One, you said you have been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, by when you talk about 20 years before this, there was Wawasan Duplo Duplo, there was Bangsa Malaysia, mm. and now One Malaysia. Mm. What are the differences between this? Uh, this hey, Wawasan Duplo Duplo and One Malaysia different. Mm -hmm. Wawasan Duplo Duplo is about achieving first world status. Yeah. What I meant was the approach, the approach that uh, the government took in uh, in introducing the, it to the to all Malaysians now. What? Yes, Wawasan Duplo Duplo was uh, introduced by a man, uh, Dr. Mahade, who mm. had first world mentality. So when he came in and he said, uh, you know, I want us to be first world, mm -hmm. it's quite easy to believe because mm -hmm. you knew he was ambitious, and he would tell uh, United States. Uh, will go, you know, and he and, he, and, and the whole of Asia, mm. and the Middle East, and some parts of Europe uh, admired him greatly for having the guts to stand up to superpowers. So he he had uh, one world mentality. In fact, he was more one world than most one world, most first world leaders. So now we have one Malaysia, and um, it's coming from a different kind of leadership. So. So it's uh, so I suppose people are a little bit hesitant mm. until this group of people go out of their way to prove uh, that they really believe in it mm. because they have not really s spoken about it before. Mm. You know, when Mahade said Wawasan 2020, he had already displayed more than one decade of first world thinking. So when he said it, everybody goes, okay, kind of believe it. You see. And right now, whoever is in charge has never ever spoken about One Malaysia before. So now when they say it, people go, uh, sit and watch lah, see whether you mean it. So I'm so glad that um, when I saw in the papers that uh, poor Tio Bing Hock's family is appealing to mm. the greatest powers to see how they would react. And <clears throat> this is very pivotal, mm. how they react to Bing Hock's uh, family's appeal mm. will, 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 will pave the way. If they say the wrong thing, people are not gonna believe them anymore. <coughs> Very important. Mm, you, you're talking about day day, the leaders. Um, what mm. are the roles of our leaders in bringing forward the values of One Malaysia then? Well, if you go by the Lao Tzu uh, principle, he yeah. says a leader has got to behave it. Mm. Because you behave the way you believe. You, you, know, you, you can say you believe in this, but if you don't behave it, nobody will believe you. You know what I mean? If, um, for example, if um, George Bush went out and said, I believe in fairness. I believe in helping uh, smaller people. Nobody will believe him because people know that he's been uh, quite instrumental in the obliteration of smaller people around the world. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If Mother Teresa said, I believe in uh, helping the small people, people go, yeah, I, help people. I, believe, I believe her, yeah? yeah? So it's like that. So we have to, we, have, we, we, we don't just talk the talk, we have to walk the walk, yes. so to speak, yeah. So, but that can be done and, uh, you know, I. I have to be optimistic, otherwise I'll just leave the country and take up the PR that the Singaporean government offered me, but I'm still here. We're talking about optimism. Mm. You're all very optimistic, right? <laughs> so, um, in your opinion, how effective has all the efforts by the government to instill national unity and to espouse the values of One Malaysia been? I don't know, I haven't done the research, but I am led to understand that interracial uh, Love affairs is on the rise, so maybe, <laughs> maybe go home. Ah. Go ah, mm. go home. Ah. Mm. Great. Um, okay, let's talk about your work. Uh, mm. Your works, uh, your award winning works such as the Tan Hone video, has put uh, social concepts uh, to society and it has uh, really shaped uh, how we think with your simple yet very powerful messages. As an opinion leader, what are your hopes of, for One Malaysia? 
I think Tan Ho Ming represents all the hopes I ever had. Actually, I didn't know what he was going to say. Mm -hmm. I just knew what questions to ask him. And uh, I had a hunch that children uh, were not race conscious until their parents teach them to be race conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people blame the government for the racial... Um, what was the word? Separation. Uh, separation. Yeah. But I think uh, it, before governments get in, in, into the way, I think the parents get in the way. I know parents who teach their children to be racist. Um, but with Tan Ho Ming, he was a, a human being who was very smart, very articulate. Mm. And the girl, Umi Kazrina, and they, they didn't know anything about race. So, so I had a feeling that the young were like that. Hope lies in the young. Anyway, ask the older generation whatever mistakes we, uh, we've made. Mm. Uh, the good news is we're going to die very soon, so it's in the hands of the young generation. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, as, uh, yeah, but you, yeah, the way you say it is that, yeah, to me, that you're implying that um, parents have a greater role in uh, instilling a nat uh, national integration with their children than Yes, the yes, of course, but parents teach the children, number one. Number two, parents vote for governments. So parents are absolutely responsible for everything. Oh. Okay. You mean by one? Yeah, beginning to learn. <laughs> what happened last uh, July? I I went for a community trip to Rao, and uh, this all asked this, and uh, I saw a great discrepancy between me as an urban citizen and a rural uh, <coughs> dweller. Mm. But uh, but we both now we both share the same concept of one Malaysia. Okay, do you think that this concept can be grasped by every Malaysian? Yes. Otherwise, I won't keep making films. Even despite the differences. Yeah. Well, one Malaysia doesn't mean mm. that uh, I will become more Chinese, or you will become more Malay, mm. or we'll both become more Indian. One Malaysia means that uh, that um, that we embrace the differences that we go by the Quran's advice that God has created many different tribes and the reason for this is so you can get to know one another mm. the Quran says that and that's my favorite book in the world second is the Tao Te Ching <laughs> but um, that's what the Quran says and I, and, and I believe it's possible mm. I mean God's not going to put on paper something which is impossible <coughs> Okay Yasmin, we've talked about um, government, the past, parents so when, when do you think that the goals of One Malaysia will be achieved? I think it will never be 100%. Uh, even in communities like... Um, like even in the, in, in the Chinese community, mm. there are those that are fighting for the preservation of Mandarin. And there are those who say, ah, yeah, language is just, you know, for, for reasons of communication, yeah. it's not important. Even in the Chinese community, for example, Christians and non-Christians you know, like my mother-in-law say, ah, yeah, the hallelujah behind there. Always go and throw stones at my pigeons, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, so, so even within each community, there is um, prejudice. So, yeah. so yeah. What, what more people from different races? For sure, yeah, why not? But <clears throat> that's the whole thing about, you know, Buddha said we were put mm. on earth to suffer mm. and experience and then overcome. Mm. So in a way, it's good that we have problems mm. because it's only by overcoming them we we'll become better people. You know, somebody, there's a famous Muslim woman called Rabiatul Adawiya, uh, a female saint mm. uh, in Islam, and she, she said that the day we were born, we already committed the greatest sin. And, <clears throat> and we have to, we have to, basically you're meant to have faults. Mm -hmm. And that how you judge a person is by how well they overcome them. Nobody is born faultless. So faults are good in a way. So at the state of things right now, do you consider uh, Malay the One Malaysian Go a destination that's very difficult to get to? See, when you look at my films and my oh. commercials, m most of them involve young people. Because I think therein lies the hope. So the fact that you and I are talking right now, yes. and you join National Service, says that, you know, we, we're on the way there. And the fact that uh, Najib has even talked about One Malaysia, yes. um, the fact that he says it and puts it up there as a kind of battle cry, mm. uh, uh, says something. And you got to hang on to these things. I mean, there are countries where 
the leaders don't say anything. I, I know, I know countries, uh, neighboring countries, where the ex prime minister went up openly in the 70s and said that he didn't approve of Chinese people marrying other races. But we're lucky we don't have such things. Mm. Besides, none of our prime ministers have been pure Malay anyway. I get some ultra Malay saying to me, you know, you are always, you know, on the side of uh, of the Indians and of the Chinese and of the Sarawakians. Actually, I'm not. I'm, I just believe in equality. And so, how would you feel if our prime minister was not Malay? And I said, Matt, you know, Dr. Mahathi was half Indian. Pala was a quarter Hokkien, and uh, and 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 Raman was part Thai, and uh, Hussein On was part Turkey. So we've never had a pure Malay leader anyway. So it, no, in some countries, now neighboring countries, you know, they, they've only had Chinese leaders, and never other races, and it doesn't look forthcoming. So we're okay la, not we're bad. Okay, la. Okay, la. Yeah. Now they say we're quite okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, these people who are half Chinese and half Malay and part Indian ones, they get into power sometimes, you know, they say, Kita orang Melayu, they use race sometimes lah to, to, to stay in power, which is very silly. But if you know that they're not pure Malay, so we can just look at them and say, Eleh. That's the ultimate argument. Okay. So, um, I guess that'll be all. Oh, so easy. Very easy. Very, very easy. Famous. But the challenge is for all Malaysians to be able to grasp and to get in one, uh, one unity and one voice um, achieve such goals. Uh. So thank you Yasmin for being on the show. You're welcome. On the show. Yeah. <laughs> Where is this going? Start online. Wow. 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 <laughs> we have like 4 million viewers. Yeah. But the number of clicks on the videos are different. Mm. Like from 100 to 50 to 14,000, 15,000. Right, thank you, Yasmin, for being a part of this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>